Let's open up in a word of prayer tonight. Father, first and foremost, as we always do when we gather together, we honor you. You are sovereign and you are holy. Heaven is your throne and earth is your footstool, Father. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for Yeshua Christ. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as we continue our series tonight, Father, I believe, I believe that there will be healing tonight. There will be healing of the heart. There will be physical healing. So begin that work. You be actually begun it this morning. So finish that work tonight. Finish the work of healing tonight. Holy Spirit, move on our hearts. Shift our hearts tonight. Point us to Christ. Point us to his healing power. Point us to his salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, it, we got a nice little crowd here tonight, and it's good to have you here. So I'm glad you guys made your way on a Wednesday night uh, on this nice summer day, right? It is hot out there. Come on, come on fall. All right, so we're going to continue our series um, on the healing uh, that we began a couple of weeks ago, the healing series, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the woman with the issue of blood. This is a really, really good uh, story of the Bible, and it is beautiful. There's healing, there's faith. There's compassion. There's everything that you can think of that, will, that addresses our needs that we might have uh, as a body. So let's review a little bit. Week one, Jesus Christ as the healer of both body and soul. We looked at five, uh, Luke 5, 17 through 20. We looked at the relationship between friends and, and Scott has said, Who's, who is your five? Okay. Week two, we looked at Jesus brings spiritual sight to, the blind, to a blind world. We looked at uh, John 9, 1 through 41. Christ heals a man born blind. The Great Commission, we're all called. We're all called. Not just one, not just Scott, not just myself or Scott Holbert, but we're all called. So special emphasis, one thing that you, you're starting to hear from the pulpit and from the leadership is the point of reading your word, studying your word. And we're going to continue to, to emphasize that time and time again because that is the foundation. The Word of God is the foundation of who we are in Him and what He's doing in our lives. It's the indwelling Word of God, sola scriptura, which is Latin, which is, which is only Scripture, Scripture alone, because it is God's inspired Word it is our inerrant, sufficient, final authority for the church. The Bible is the sole source of authority for the Christian faith and practice. It begins with the Bible. It ends with the Bible. And we're to live, live every bit of that word. That word. That word must be who we are day in and day out. So you're going to hear that from us time and time again. Okay, so tonight we are, going to, we are driving, diving into week three of our Healer series where we explore the healing power of Christ, not just for our physical bodies, but for our hearts, 
minds, and soul. Today we're looking at the passage that holds profound lessons about faith, grace, and healing. Mark 5, uh, 21 through, uh, through 34. Again, when we think about healing, we, we always think about the physical healing. But there's so much more involved than just the physical healing. We're going to see that in this lesson tonight. So I want you to keep that in mind. There's so much more involved than just the physical, the physical healing. Again, the minds, hearts, and soul, the greatest miracle was the work on the cross for our souls. God's salvation, the greatest miracle of all. Without that miracle, we have no other miracles, right? So the greatest miracle is his salvation. The story, this story captures two miracles, however. Both acts of healing that showcase Jesus' incredible power and compassion. But it's the healing of the woman with the issue of blood that we'll focus on in this case. <clears throat> Let's get here. This account is about more than just the physical healing again. It reveals Christ's desire to heal our deepest wounds and restore us fully. Now, when we're reading this story, when we're going through this lesson, I want you to put yourself in this lady's place. I want you to walk her journey as we walk, as we read this tonight. Put yourself in that place. Where are you at in your faith? Where are you at in your faith? As we read this, put yourself in, in, in her story. Let's read our anchor scripture, Mark 5, 25 through 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. You see, the faith is, is beginning to start building here. Verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? We read, we're actually, Lynette and I are reading through our one-year Bible, and we read this. As a matter of fact, we're in Mark this week. And when we got to this point, I heard Lynette kind of snicker over there. She goes, that's crazy. You know, for them to say, what? you see all these people? Who, who are you talking about, right? So, but his disciples said to him, you see the multitude, again, thronging through you, and, say, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Again, put yourself in her shoes. The woman with the issue of blood. As Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house, a woman enters the story. She's been bleeding for 12 years, just like Jairus' daughter is 12 years old. This woman has suffered for 12 long years. That kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? 12 whole years, this girl's whole life. Jairus was a, an official in the temple. And Jesus was on his way to go uh, heal her because she was sick. But yet, he, 
the story stops right here in the middle of his journey to go heal someone else and stops. And think about that. He stops in the middle of all that. In her time, this condition would make her a social outcast. She wasn't allowed in the temple, and anyone who touched her would be unclean. And back then, if you know your history, that if you were unclean, if you had a disease, in this case you had a blood disease, you were not to go to church, if you will. You were not to go into the temple. No one could touch you. Could, could, could touch you. you were unclean. So not only, and we'll see more of this, but not only did she have a, a physical disease, but she also had an emotional disease, right? She was hurting physically and emotionally. She had spent everything she had on the doctors, and no one could heal her. Think about the hopelessness, again, the isolation, the shame, and yet she had heard of Jesus, and in her heart, faith began to grow. She said to herself, if I can just touch his garment, I will be healed. She took, she took a chance. She took a huge chance. She knew, and they knew who she was. So, but she was going for it. She says, what else do I have left? I've done everything I, I could do. And she heard the stories. She heard the miracles. She knew that there was a man that could heal her. And she said, I'm going for it. The second thing we will look at is healing as an act of grace. Healing as an act of grace. Verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So what happens next is an incredible display of God's, of Jesus' grace. The woman reaches out, touches his garment, and immediately she is healed. The bleeding stops, and her body is made whole. Verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Now, notice something. In most of the healing stories in the Gospels, it's Jesus who initiates the healing, right? So when you read the Scriptures, it's usually Him initiating the healings. And this is very important because this is, it, it takes a different twist now, right? He touches, He speaks, and people are healed. But here, this woman takes action action. Again, she was desperate. She was bleeding for 12 years, and she needed some relief. So she comes to Jesus in her desperation with nothing left but what? Faith. That's all. That's all she had it was just her faith. This is a picture of grace. This is a beautiful picture of grace. Jesus doesn't, he doesn't withhold healing from her because she's unclean. In fact, he welcomes her act of faith, even though she technically broke the rules by touching him, right? Why? Because she was what? Unclean. Jesus' power, gr grace transcend her uncleanliness. This, when you read that and when we, and we, and when we look at that, this is a, a beautiful picture of God's salvation, right? He takes what's unclean, and it takes our faith to reach out to him and ask for that salvation. So this is a beautiful picture of his compassion and his love. Jesus just as the woman was made clean, so are 
we. Christ's healing work isn't, again, it, just, it isn't just physical, but it is spiritual. His grace covers our deepest shame, our darkest regrets, and the sin that weighs us down. Christ's healing is an act of sal sal salvific grace, salvation, that washes away our uncleanness forever. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Number three, faith that reaches out. Okay? We're getting, we're getting a little, we're moving ahead. We're progressing here. Verse 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? And after the woman touches Jesus' garment, he stops and asks again, Who touched my garments? The disciples are confused. How can he ask such a thing in the crowd of people pressing against him? But Jesus knew that, that, that the power had gone out from him. He knew. He knew that somebody had reached out and touched him, touched his garments, to the point, to the point where that power and that virtue was touched. He knew. The woman realizing what had happened comes forward in fear and trembling. trembling. And she falls at his feet and confesses. But instead of rebuking her, Jesus lovingly says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Wow. Just wow. Put yourself in her place. Can you imagine? Can you imagine 12 years of bleeding, 12 years of the disease, and 12 years of being isolated, shamed, rejected. Can you imagine? And now all of a sudden her life changes just like that. Just like that. Put yourself in her place. The Greek word used here is therapeuo, I guess, right? I tried to, to get that. Therapeuo, therapeuo, I think. English word therapy is what that means. It means to heal or to cure. Healing is a process. Get that. Get that. Healing is a process. Jesus did not wave a magic wand over people. They were all, and they were all better. He physically worked with them. That's key. He did therapy that led them into a state of being healed. See? You see the picture? He worked with them. Now, healing, therapy, also requires an action in faith. Now, again, we saw where he always initiated the healing. But here, again, it takes a different twist now. She has to initiate it. She has to go. She has to move. It's her moving towards him. Jesus told the woman that her faith made her well. He also told her to go in peace and be healed. As she went in faith, her healing continued the process. Right? It didn't end there, right? It didn't end there. She was both, again, physically and spiritually healed. And I can just imagine, oh my goodness, the peace, the comfort that she had with that experience. Put yourself in her place. Put yourself in her shoes. Where are you at? Where are we at in our healing now let's pause and reflect on that. This woman's faith was bold, right? We know that. How do we know that? 
She, had, she, she, she didn't have anything else that she can do. All she had was faith, and she went for it, even though that she knew that she would be looked at and judged. She reached out to Jesus when others might have told her not to. She believed that Jesus touching his clothes, just touching his clothes, could bring healing. And her faith wasn't in vain. Jesus acknowledged her. Called her what? Daughter. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. And declared her faith had made her well. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the look, the eye contact that was made between him and her? Can you imagine what she felt? How overwhelmed she was with love and compassion. It has been healed, has been made complete. Can you imagine? This is the kind of faith that we, that we are called to have, you and I. This is the kind of faith that we are called to have, a faith that reaches to Jesus, knowing that he is the source of our healing, a faith that believes even when the situation seems hopeless, seems hopeless. How many times have we been there? How many times have we been there? Where, again, where are we in our faith? Where are we in this journey of healing, of not only physical but the emotional healing? There are hurts. We've been isolated. We've been spoken against. We've been lied to. Where are you at? Think about it. The fourth thing we want to look at here is healing from shame and unworthiness. Now let's consider something deeper. We're going to get personal. We're going to get a little bit more personal here. Now let's consider that this woman didn't just receive physical healing for 12 years. She had been, again, an outcast excluded from the temple, rejected by society, and possibly even by her own family. Some of us have been there. Right. Right, honey? Yes. But in that moment, Jesus restored her not only physically, but socially and spiritually. Look at the wholeness. Look at everything that's taken place there in this story. She was no longer quote-unquote unclean. No longer unclean. She could enter the temple again. She could return to her community all because Jesus healed her. Mm. She can go back to church. She can go back and listen to Pastor Scott's messages. She can go back and partake in our 50-plus gatherings and other gatherings that we have. Man, she was excited. I can just imagine. How beautiful. Oh, if I could have just been there. <laughs> if I could have just been there to see her excitement. Now, how many of us walk, walk around feeling unclean? Now, we're getting personal. We're going to get a little deep here. Feeling like our past mistakes, our sins, or our failures are too much for God to forgive. Stop and think about that. Even after we've accepted, accepted Christ's salvation, we still carry the weight of shame. Thinking we're not worthy of, of His grace. I see a lot of, a lot of saints like that. We see a lot of saints like that.
But Jesus tells us the same thing. He told that woman, your faith has made you well. Saints, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Go in peace. Jesus had already healed you, forgiven you, and washed you clean. You are made whole in him. And he calls you daughter or son. You don't have to carry the shame anymore. Isn't that, that is beautiful. That we don't have to carry that any longer. No longer do we have to carry that. And if you're here tonight, and that's the case, before you leave tonight, guess what? We're going to pray you through, and you're going to be released of that. No longer do you have to carry it. The fifth thing that we want to talk about is the power of community. Now, this is important. The power of community. Verse 32 and he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So let's talk about the importance of community. What is community? It's us. It's us. It's the church. It's the local church. It's us coming together on Sunday morning. It's us, to, it's us together coming on Wednesday nights. It's us together coming in, in fellowship. That's the community. The woman, now again, remember, the woman had been isolated for how long? Twelve years. Can you imagine? Some saints walk around for that long feeling rejected feeling hurt, feeling shame for 12 years because of her condition. When Jesus healed her, he not only restored her health, but he also, her, also her place in the community, in the local body. Yeah. How beautiful is that? She could worship again. She could engage with others again. And again, she can come and listen to Pastor on Sunday mornings. And guess what? She was looking forward to it. <laughs> right? She was going to be back in church. She was out for 12 years. She was isolated. She was shamed. She was sick. And now, do you think she's going to be there every Sunday morning? You bet she is. You bet she is. And that's the difference that Christ makes in our life when we are healed. Can you imagine her excitement? Yeah. Mm. So as believers, we are called to support one another. And that's what I love about our church. Okay. Our church comes together and supports each other and takes care of each other. That's a thriving, that's a thriving church. And I love to see that. I love to see that. And, and, and me getting hurt, you guys have rallied together. And you have come, and you have helped, and you have prayed, and, and you have provided meals. And, you know, we've always been on that giving in, right? Lynette and I have. So to see the body come together and help support, this is what now she's experiencing, especially in times of need. The church is meant to be a place where healing happens, yeah. not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. We should be reminding each other of God's grace and helping each other to overcome feelings of unworthiness and shame. Mm, beautiful. We're, in this all, we're, all this in, we're all in this thing together. Let's be a community that lifts one, uh, one another up, points each other to Jesus, and walks alongside each of you in faith. That's a church. That's a healthy church. And that's the church that we are becoming. And that's beautiful to see. I'm so excited. 
I'm so excited to see what God is doing in this church and the growth that's taking place because we are implementing and we are actually doing these things. The sixth thing we want to look at is the application of this story. Walking in healing. Amen. So how can we apply this to our lives? This week, I want to encourage you to spend time in prayer about the areas of your life where you still feel, listen to me, where you still feel unclean, unworthy, or ashamed, and lay those things at the feet of Jesus. I want you, we want you to do that this week. Begin. And as a matter of fact, as I was praying this morning, you don't even have, you, you don't have to wait until then. Tonight, tonight we can pray with you and you can be released. Tonight, you can leave this place as she left, made whole, healed. Oh, that's beautiful. Knowing that he has already washed you clean, right? Knowing that he's already washed you clean, let's all commit to reminding one another of God's grace, encouraging each other. If you know someone who is struggling with shame or guilt, reach out to them. Simply reach out to them. Share the story from Mark 5 and remind them that Jesus' healing power covers everything. Everything. And finally, let's be people of faith. Like the woman in this story, let's reach out to Jesus with boldness, trusting in his power to restore, to heal and to restore. In closing, remember this. Christ's healing is, again, not just physical. We always think about it in the physical way, but it's spiritual. He came to make us whole, to wash away our shame, and to restore us to a life of grace. His healing power is still available today. Still available to us today. Isn't that right, Don? He can testify, as many of you can. And all we need to do is to reach out and out in faith. Again, the greatest miracle that could take place in our life is his salvation that he gives us. That's the greatest miracle. That's the greatest miracle. And if that's not the case with you tonight, make sure you, you talk to one of us before you leave. I want you to bow your heads. We're going to spend a little time here. Ellie, if you can come to the piano. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Father, we sense your presence. We sense your glory. I sense faith that is welling up in your people here tonight. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do what you do best. And I want each of us to examine, to look deep down inside. Let's, see, let's do some house cleaning here, guys. Did you put yourself in this woman's shoes? Were you part of her story? Is there shame? 
Is there isolation? Is there hurt? That healing is taking place. There are you that are here tonight where that healing is taking place. Don't leave this place tonight. Don't leave this place tonight. Be as this woman. Be the example of this woman. Faith. Boldness. Believing. She reached out. She touched his garment. She needed the answer. She needed the healing. And if you're here tonight, and that's you, that's you, Christ is healing. Christ is restoring hope, faith, love, forgiveness. Mm. Thank you for the work that's being done here tonight. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you that you turned, you stopped and you turned to look at us. And you looked straight in our hearts and said, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Go in peace tonight for a work, for a work of healing has been done. So Father, tonight, thank you for this rich story. Thank you for this rich story. Again, thank you for salvation. Thank you, Christ, that you, you made the ultimate sacrifice. You paid the price so that we might have salvation, so that we might be healed, so that we might be forgiven, and so that we might have eternal life. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. If you're here tonight, and that really spoke to you tonight, seek one of us out. Seek uh, Scott, both Scots or myself. But I feel, I feel liberty. I feel freedom. I feel his love and his grace. Father, be with us as we leave tonight. Bring us back on Sunday morning, the day of the Lord, to honor, to glorify, and to praise you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Give yourself, give each other a hug and a kiss, if you will, right? Amen. We love you. We'll see you on Sunday.